Hi everyone, welcome to the BB Ed channel, welcome to new subscribers and to my um, family of old. Um, I'm here today on the 6th of September 2021 to share some amazing words and visions from the Lord that should really encourage you and I hope give you strength to walk the road that Jesus has set before us. And so let's get straight into it. So the first word that I received was on the 22nd of September and, oh, sorry, 22nd of August. And uh, these are the incredible words that I was given, so unexpected. Let him who starts his path chart his path to the end. Let's look at that in black and white. This is what I heard. Let him who starts his path chart his path to the end. Now, when I heard that in the night, I thought that is so beautifully worded. And I actually said to the Lord, Lord, that is so beautiful and so wise. And he came back straight away and said this. He said, certainly. Do it then. And he said that with some emphasis. So don't just hear my words, do it, he said. It is wise and beautiful, but the key point was we must do it. Now, of course, I thought of the scriptures in Matthew, Matthew 7, it's in, starting at verse 13, that says, Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy, and there are many who travel it. But Jesus said, the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it is hard, and there are few people who find it. Jesus was speaking about his road, the narrow road, the narrow way. It cannot be easy at times, but it is worth the walking. Now this um, picture of the metal road is harking back to a vision I had uh, several years ago, and I have shared it online before. But one time, the Lord gave me a vision of this dirt road, and in the middle of the road, lying down, was a figure of a man in a long biblical gown, and he had his arms outstretched as Jesus was on the cross. The man and the road blended in together, so I had to really study it to work out what I was seeing. And as I was watching, the figure of the man dissolved into the road. And I knew immediately that the road he was showing me was the path in which I was being asked to walk. And you also will have the road in which you, in which you must walk. In Isaiah 50 verse 10 it says, All of you that have reverence for the Lord and obey the words of his servant, Jesus, the path you walk may be dark indeed, but trust in the Lord, rely on your God. So just going back to those words that he said to me, let him who starts his path, we start our path with Christ when we um, accept his offer of salvation and forgiveness of sins and we commit our life to the Lord. That is the start of the path. But what did he say after that? He said, chart his path to the end. And that word chart to me brought back visions or Sorry, not visions, but it brought back pictures of um, intrepid explorers with world maps in front of them and they might have dividers and magnifying glasses as they study the continents and work out a path in which they will get to their destination. And they would look for all the hazards in the journey, freezing cold, um, maybe disease, war-torn countries, um, heat or lack of food and shelter, they would chart their path according to um, making wise decisions, I guess. And we can make wise decisions by following the word of the Lord. Psalm 119 says this in verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I dwelt on these words in the nights to come and I prayed one night saying, Lord, please help me. How am I going to stay the course? How am I going to make sure I stay on the path that you have for me? Please help me. I felt a little anxious. 
because it is hard to walk the narrow way. And that night, the Lord gave me another vision, and this is just used to help you see what I saw. It was night time and I saw a road before me. This picture is a runway, but I saw just a road. And there was no centre strip of lights, but as I looked down the road, I saw start to come up in front of my eyes, small glowing um, and flickering on and off gold lights on each side, one line on the left and one on the right. The Lord was saying he is going to light our path. He is going to make sure we know where the boundaries are. We might get close to those boundaries, but we will know where the boundaries are. And just to illustrate this even further, a few nights later, he gave me another vision. And brothers and sisters, I had to sort of draw this so that you would understand what I saw. But I saw a driveway, a concrete driveway leading up a slope to a building. And on each side of the driveway, as you can see here, there was a barrier and it was just a few inches high, high of concrete, like a lip. And on each side of the driveway was a drop, a scary drop. And so I knew I was driving the car up this driveway and I was very aware that there was a drop on each side. As you can see on this side, I've put danger. And also this, uh, the other side, I've put a long drop off. So I knew that just that small curbing was stopping my car from going over the edge and I couldn't see where the edge was because it was just so narrow and I was afraid that I was going to drive off the edge and fall down and wreck my car <laughs> isn't it and then as I was watching the I was driving the car but I was also watching it from the outside which you can do in visions and as I saw the dri uh, car driving up I saw the wheels on the left hand side veer inwards and I knew um, that the Lord was saying, don't worry, I'm going to take control of the vehicle at times. I will not let you go over the edge. And then I saw the car arrive safely at the building. And I see uh, that building being the destination, our goal, our time in heaven with our Father God and with Jesus Christ. So what does the Bible say about walking this path? What do we need to walk this narrow way? We need beginning to start with faith in Christ. We need to have said, you're in charge of my life, Lord, from now on. But then we need staying power. We need to run the race, as Paul said, to the very end with our goal in mind. We also need to keep our robes clean through the blood of Jesus, staying repentant. We also need to watch and wait like the ten virgins for his return, to keep our lamps lit, to make sure we are filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to our Saviour and to the Holy Spirit. Listen to our Shepherd and follow him. When I was thinking about this journey and um, charting our course, I thought of the old book written by John Bunyan in the 1600s called Pilgrim's Progress. It's a difficult book to read because the language is old, but it's an amazing story that um, John Bunyan wrote when he was in prison for his faith, basically. He was in prison because he wasn't following the Church of England. Um, and he wrote this book about his journey and all the difficulties that he encountered on staying on Jesus' path, on his pathway to heaven. And um, he explained the difficulties he's, and he also explained the beauty of the cross and how it lightened his load. Now just to finish, so hang in there because this is a glorious vision. On that night when the Lord showed me the roadway with the, the marker lights, the gold twinkling marker lights on the left and the right, and I thought of the runway, um, 
it was so much like a runway, but um, it was a road. Um, but that night, just before I woke up, he gave me an amazing vision. And um, I took a picture of it. Um, to, I actually reenacted it in my own home so that you could actually see what I saw. So bear with me. So let me describe it to you. What I saw were three suitcases on a floor. Um, they were at different angles um, to one another. And one of them I recognized was my suitcase. And um, the other two suitcases were completely zipped up. But my suitcase was unzipped at the bottom, just like this. And what I saw protruding out of the suitcase, as if it still needed to be just finally tucked in and zipped up, was a fine, filmy fabric that I knew belonged to a wedding gown. And I thought, what a blessing. The Lord was saying, be packed and ready. Our destination is not too far down that road. We need to be packed and ready. And what will be in our suitcases? Our gown for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Hallelujah. So what does Revelation say? Revelation 19 says um, in verse 7, Praise God, for the Lord Almighty God is King. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us praise His greatness, for the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself for it. She has been given clean, shining linen to wear. The linen is the good deeds of God's people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And the angel added, These are the true words of God. In some of the last verses in the Bible, Revelations 22, starting at verse 16, says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him who says, hears say, Come. Let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. That is what is um, offered to us through Christ Jesus. To be part of the bride of Christ. To be possessors of the water of life. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for these words and visions, Lord. I pray you'll bless each one of us as we listen and take it in and reflect on your words. Amen.